Hello, and welcome to our National Day of Prayer program. The National Day of Prayer has been around since 1952 when President Truman signed the official day into law. Usually we gather in the front steps of City Hall, but this year it's going to look a lot different. We put together a National Day of Prayer video just for you. I'm always proud to represent Pasadena, and one of the things I love the best is that we're a praying city. We have such great churches and faithful people. A few of them have come together to help us pray over different areas of our community. Please enjoy. God bless you, your family. God bless Pasadena. Well, today is the National Day of Prayer, and I want to thank Mayor Wagner for asking me to say just a few words this afternoon as we begin our service. You know, normally this is the time when we come together at City Hall and we pray for our nation we pray for our president, for our governor, for our mayor, for our council leaders. We also pray for our city on this particular day. And, and yet with the pandemic that we're all going through right now and social distancing, it's just not possible for us to get together and, and pray, you know, where we're physically together like that. But nonetheless, uh, I'm so grateful that the mayor still wanted to have this National Day of Prayer here in Pasadena and that we can still pray, even though today we're praying from our homes and from, from different places than we would normally pray from. You know, today, I just would encourage you to pray that God would, would favor and bless our country and that he would bless our city. This uh, pandemic, this coronavirus that we're experiencing right now makes today even a more important day, and it makes the emphasis on prayer even more needed. And I would just encourage you to pray for those who have lost loved ones, pray for others who are sick right now, battling for their lives with this virus, pray that God would keep the rest of us healthy, and I would also just encourage you to pray that at the right time, Jesus Christ would speak the word and that this virus would be no more, that he would heal the virus, that he would remove the virus from our, from our world. I also encourage you just to continue to pray for our city, for our city leaders, uh, pray for our churches, for our families, for our businesses. So many are struggling right now, understandably so with what the nation is going through. And today, as we go through the National Day of Prayer, again, in a different way, than we normally would, we'll have opportunities to have different prayer emphasis and to hear from different leaders from the community. So God bless you for joining us today. I want to encourage you. God is with us. He has not left us. And today, as we turn our hearts and as we turn our minds on him, may he comfort our hearts, may he heal our land, and may he make this virus go away. God bless you, and may this be a very meaningful National Day of Prayer for you. Hello, would you please join me in praying uh, for our health care providers? Lord, we place into your care all doctors and nurses and health care workers. Lord, help all who are called to the health care profession, from the custodian to the surgeon. You tell us in your word to cast all of our care on you, for you care for us. Give them courage of heart and strength of mind and body. Keep them safe from harm. May they know our deep gratitude for all they are doing to heal and to help those affected by the coronavirus. You're the God of all consolation. May they know your protection and peace. Bless them in these challenging days and bless their families. Thank you. Everyone, please be safe and God bless you all. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for those men and women who are dedicated to serve and protect our country. Thank you for the promise you gave us to never leave us, nor forsake us. We pray for those who are working in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Protect them. Take care of their families. Put your eyes in their eyes, your hands in their hands and fill them with wisdom. Go with them wherever they go. We also pray for the first responders. We pray for the four police officers, firefighters, and emergency medical personnel. Those people who are risking their lives to save others. We pray that you put a wall of protection around them. You have placed in them love and dedication for people. And that love comes from you, Lord Jesus. That's why we thank you, my God. We thank you, Lord, because you, yourself, came to save us. 
You gave your life in the, in the cross of Calvary to give us forgiveness. You have mercy on us. Now help us to have mercy on others. You have forgiven us. Now help us forgive others. You loved us. Now help us to love others. Thank you, God. We love you. We praise you. We worship you in the holy name of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Hello, Pasadena. I have the privilege to pray for area businesses today. Let's join together in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for this day that we take to pause and to pray with one another for our communities and our neighborhoods. Right now, we lift up to you our area businesses. And first, Lord, frankly, we just want to pray for their success. This is such a hard time for the economy, and there are so many people whose livelihoods are um, determined by uh, the success of our local businesses and their ability to provide for themselves and their families. So we just pray that these businesses would do well, Lord, that you would give guidance um, to the business owners uh, so that they can make it through uh, this challenging time. But Lord, we also know that success comes in a couple of different ways. And we pray not only for the financial success of these businesses, but also spiritually, Lord, like the Proverbs say in chapter 18, that, um, that we would be able to listen before we answer, give answers to things. That Lord, we would not um, function out of fear, uh, but confidence in you, that your Holy Spirit would show the way um, so that, um, that all of our area businesses really can come out of this stronger. Because Lord, there's such a, there is such a temptation to have a scarcity mindset, like, oh my gosh, we don't have enough, I don't have enough of this or that. Um, and of course, these are really struggling, uh, challenging times. And yet, um, we know that in you, there's always abundance, there's always enough, we always have enough in you, Lord, though it might not look the way we thought. And so we pray, Lord, that um, our businesses would be able to use this time not only to survive, but to redesign and emerge from it stronger than they ever had been before. We pray for strong friendships within the community that would lead to collaboration and um, mutual success. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you would bring new business leaders to our community, new industries perhaps, and that the right businesses would come to our community to help provide for the needs of all of our people. And Lord, we also pray for the impact that these businesses are having. We pray, Lord, that they would not only be focused on um, their own bottom line, though of course they have to focus on that. And they, we pray that, they, that you lead them to be able to do that. Um, and yet, we also pray, Lord, that they would be considering the impact that they have on the community and the ways that you call us all to servant leadership. And so we pray for each one of our area businesses, Lord, that you would just encourage them, that you would guide them, that you would help them, and that you would lead them from this place um, into a place of abundance and hope, remembering that you have a plan for each one of our futures. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hello, my name is Marshall Kendrick. I am currently the president of the Pasadena Independent School District Board of Trustees, and it is with great concern and care and feeling that I appreciate your confidence in me that as I serve in my 31st year, yet I'm very proud to be part of one of the outstanding districts in the state of Texas. Today, we're celebrating our National Day of Prayer in our country, one that we really need to spend time with our Creator and tell Him how much we appreciate His love and protection over us. At this time, I would also like to pray for our educators and our parents and students as we celebrate this day, if you'll pray with me. Father, we thank you so much for your love and care for us. We thank you for the fact that you are the creator, the God of life, and one who sustains us. Father, today I come and thank you for our school district, for the educators and personnel that have done so much and worked so hard to make sure that our students have been able to stay on course in their studies. I want to thank you for an outstanding leadership of our superintendent, Dr. T. Ann Powell. She's done a marvelous job of pulling things together, and of the 8,000 employees that we have, everyone has been involved. 
in serving our students, and our students have been in, in unbelievably engaged in keeping up with their coursework. We know that it's taken a lot of sacrifice for a lot of people, and it's happened throughout our district with our parents and our employees. We just praise your name for what has been going on and what has happened. We thank you for the fact that we've had so few cases of COVID-19, and we thank you for keeping our city and our school district and our parents and our students safe during this time. We pray, Father, as we look forward to opening a school at some point, that you will continue to watch over and protect us. We thank you for keeping our families safe and healthy. And we look forward to a closing of school that we will still see at some point, our graduations and celebrations of the consciousness of our students. Father, now as we thank you for your presence and your watch care over us, we pray that you would be with us, our community, our city, and our administrators and all of our employees. Would you watch over them? Would you keep them safe? And would you give them good health as we face the days ahead? We know that we're coming to the light of the end of the tunnel. We thank you for that. We thank you for your grace and mercy. In your precious son's name we ask. Amen. Hey, everybody. My name is Pastor Ward. I'm a pastor here at Connect Community Church in Pasadena, right across the street from Memorial High School. We're honored to be a part of the faith community here in Pasadena and honored to uh, be a part of this city. We're praying for our mayor and for our city council and for the leaders throughout this region that God would bless them. On this National Day of Prayer, I've been asked to uh, pray particularly for our media, both local and national, our uh, social media presence. We know it has such a great uh, bearing on the things that we look for today. I'm praying particularly for a couple of key things. We are asking that our media would reflect the values of the people in the community and especially godly values. The second thing, we're asking that the media would be fair and accurate in their reporting and uh, any uh, notice of bias would be put aside. We're praying that uh, the media would place a high value on truth and accuracy and reporting the truth uh, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And finally, we're asking that the media would uh, hold their uh, influence in our community as a high honor and they would be responsible. Join me in prayer now as we pray for all of these things. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We pray for the media, social media, reporters, television, radio, uh, uh, print, Lord, all of these things. And we ask God that you would bless uh, these areas, Lord. We pray, God, that the truth would prevail in our community. And we ask, Lord, that you would uh, bless the leaders, the editorial boards, the people that are serving in these areas. Uh, and God, the truth uh, would come forth, Lord. We pray uh, that hidden agendas would be exposed and that, God, your truth will prevail in our community. We thank you, Lord, for those who serve in these areas. We pray for the godly people who are working in these areas, that they will have courage and uh, they will live without fear of speaking up. Bless them, we pray. Thank you for the opportunity to pray in the National Day of Prayer. We pray blessing on these in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hello, my name is Jim Fiertag, and I'm the pastor of Parkgate Community Church, and I've had the honor of being asked to pray over our churches in our city on this important day. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, the church that you've called together of every um, different denomination and size and uh, stripe of every kind needs the power of your Holy Spirit to flow in and through them. We pray, God, that you would make them abundantly clear in how they share the gospel and how they communicate the, the truth of Jesus and how they carry on the spirit of Jesus, whether they're gathered together formally for worship or they're scattered at work and in their neighborhoods and with their families. We pray, God, in this critical time that you would help the church to rise to the occasion 
and minister very concretely and directly to the acute needs that people have in the city for food and for community and for uh, emotional, mental, and, and spiritual well-being, for, for all manner of different needs, God. We pray that you would give the churches the resources that they need and a heart to obey you and to honor you, to, to touch the lives of so many people in and through uh, our city. We ask God that you would do exceedingly abundantly beyond anything you, we could ever ask or imagine. So much so that when this is over, there's no way that any human being could take the credit. But it would have to be you that's been involved and engaged in what's going on in your church. So we pray, Father, for the gospel to go forth. We pray, Father, for needs to be met. And we pray, Father, for empowered people carrying the truth of Jesus wherever they are in word and in deed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm the Reverend Pedro Lopez, pastor of Saint, San Pedro St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Pasadena. I invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. O Lord Almighty, whose glory is in all the world, in this time of pandemic and of social and economic crisis, we commend this nation to your merciful care, that being guided by your providence, we may dwell secure in your peace. We pray for the President of the United States, the Congress, the governors, the judges, and officers of courts. We pray for our mayor, Jeff Wagner, the council members of the city of Pasadena, and to all in authority. Grant them wisdom and strength to know and to do your will. Fill them with your love of truth and justice and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve the people in their care, to promote the well-being of all people, especially those most vulnerable among us, the sick, the homeless, the elderly, the unemployed, and the poor. Teach our leaders of government and all citizens to rely on your strength to accept our responsibility to our fellow citizens, to make wise decisions for the well-being of our society, that we may serve you, Lord, faithfully in our generation and in this time of crisis. We pray. Amen. Hey everyone, my name is Nick Cavanis and I'm the executive pastor at CT Church in Pasadena and I have the honor of praying with you for families during this National Day of Prayer. Family is central to the story of God's love for each and every one of us. We've heard many times over from the Bible in John chapter 3 verse 16, it says that God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son so that if anyone would believe in Him, they would not perish but have eternal life. See, God included family in His rescue plan for us in this world. And that's why family is so important even here today, not just in the Bible, but in our community, in the workplace, in the city. It is the lifeblood of how we connect. And I just want to pray for just a few minutes to just to bless families in our city, in our communities, in our region. Father, I thank you for showing us family first. I thank you for blessing us with the move of your family, that you would send your son for us and demonstrate what real love looks like in family. It's sacrificial and it's eternal. It has eternal impact. God, I pray that during this season, families would find more of your love. Families would find more of connection and community, especially during these trying seasons that we've walked through together. God, every family within our city, I know you have put here for a reason and a purpose. So God, together, I pray that we could make an incredible difference together, love people well, and demonstrate to others in the region around us how we are a community of people who love family well. God, I pray that you would just continue to demonstrate your great love 
through our families in our city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.